All right, so let's say we have a scene with three different cameras and we want to blend between these cameras. So there is quite an easy trick to do that and it's called the cam camera blend component. So we can just add that into our network here. What we got here is actually one, one camera that is looking from close angle, one from another angle, and then we have one camera that is just rotating around our scene uh, using a look at, so a point that it's always forced to look at and a constraint with which we're like, have some more control over rotation and th these kind of things. So basically I just added a, uh, an expression here, so it's automatically rotating. And we wanna blend between all of these three different cameras. So I've added a cam blend here, and we have different types of blending here. And to actually enable this camera blend or to make it possible to blend between these cameras, what we're gonna do is select our cameras and use the outputs, and yes, we have output some components too, if you're not already aware of that, and we can take these and input them into our camera blend here. And you can see this is sort of like, you know, when you have a component top, uh, composite top, this sort of open input where we can add as many inputs as we want. So it doesn't have to be three cameras, could also be 10 or however many you want. So usually by default, it's set to blend, and that just means now we, we have the ability to basically set weights of how much one camera is affecting this positioning here or the, yeah, the perspective. So as you can see, if I add a bit of our second camera here, it just slightly uses this rotation and just adds it to our first values. So this is kind of a weird way to work in my opinion but it can be kind of interesting. But the sort of better way I think to work with this is to use the sequence, uh, or the more straightforward or intuitive way to work with this is the sequence. And what we can do here is really just fade from one to the other camera. So if I, right now it's set to zero, I can now go up and it just takes all of our position and rotation and whatever data, you know, all of this data basically. So translation, rotation, scaling, and uh, fog even and we can fade from one to the other, right? And uh, right now you might think, all right, we're just fading from one to the other. How, how can we fade to the third one? Well, as usual, you can always just go higher with this number. And now you can see we're actually fading from static to an animated camera. So we can go down with this and well, maybe a bit more. Of course, if I do this manually, it's not very smooth. But what we can do, for example, is we can add an LFO. And I'm just going to offset this by one. So we have value between zero and one. And I'm just going to use this on the sequence. Of course, it's way too fast right now. So I'm going to go down with my frequency to 0.2. And now you can see we're going from one camera to the another and then back again. This isn't super smooth right now because uh, the, the way our cameras are set up, it kind of looks like it's sort of, you know, jumping a bit too much. But if you set your cameras uh, in a, up in a, in a good way, then you can work with this really nicely. All right, let's now look at how we can actually use this here. It's really quite simple. We All we need to do is drag this on here or type in the name of our camera blend. And now our render is actually using our camera blend instead of just one camera. So yeah, this is really straightforward way to just move between cameras, camera states, and to get some interesting results on your scene.